public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in the court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network, a network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. What you're about to see was one of the best kept secrets of modern law enforcement. It involved the combined law enforcement agencies of Southern California and Mexico. It was called Operation Cleat. What's the matter, officer? Was I speeding? Get out and keep your hands in sight. What for? We're asking the questions. Get out. Is this your car? Yeah, I just bought it from a buddy of mine, Herb Jackson. Uh -huh. Where is he? Well, I don't know. He went up north to see about a job. Take the keys, Joe. Get going. We're taking you in. Hey, wait a minute. You're not taking me anywhere. I haven't done anything wrong. Maybe. But you better be able to explain those license plates. They're hot. Well, I tell you, I don't know anything about it. Herb sold me the car. Said he'd send me the pink slip. Ask Herb Jackson. He'll tell you. I will when I find him. But you're the one accused of grand theft auto. Look, I spent good money for that car. Doesn't that mean anything? It could mean one to ten years. One to ten? What's Lonnie gonna do? Lonnie? My kid brother. Who's gonna take care of him? Well, haven't you any family? No. Mother and father are both dead. Don't tell him the jail I'm in, Mr. Matthews. He's going to wonder where you are. I told him I was going on a vacation, but it's been some time, and I got to do something. Now, you say you bought this car from Herb Jackson. Where did you meet him? At Rosie's Motor Service, a garage where I worked. We were good buddies. When was the last time you saw him? Mm, a couple of weeks ago. He said he'd sell me the car cheap. He needed the money. <laughs> cheap is right. Swipes a car and dumps it on a pal. Do you have any idea where he went? Only that he was going upstate to look for a job. Mr. Matthews, you got to find Herb Jackson. I don't want to take the rap for him. Well, we'll do our best, but remember, California is a big state. If I was going to be able to do anything for Bill Ewing, I first had to get a line on Herb Jackson. Yeah, I know Ewing. What's he in for? Well, they say he stole a car. Well, did he or didn't he? That's not for me to say. Did he work here long? On and off for about a year. He was a good mechanic, too. They're hard to find these days. Did uh, Herb Jackson ever work here? Uh, Jackson? No, I don't think I ever heard of him. Well, he sold the car Ewing was picked up in. Uh, hot car, huh? He ought to have known better. Well, if you do hear anything, let me know, will you? Sure. Hey, I couldn't interest you in a good motor job, huh? Good deal. Nothing down, three years to pay? Oh, thanks. Maybe another time. Yeah? Oh, yeah, Mr. Capon. Well, sure the car will be here. When Rosie says it will be, it will be. Yeah, I got the place, but who's going to drive it? I can't help it, Mr. Capon. Things are getting hot. We lost four out of five. I'll call you back. Yeah, kid, what do you want? I'm looking for my brother. Well, who's your brother? We've got a lot of guys working here. Bill Ewing. I'm Lonnie. Um, where is he? Well, didn't he tell you? He went on a little vacation. Well, that was two weeks ago. He said he'd be back in a week. Well, maybe he met up with a doll. You know how those things are, kid. Nah, he wouldn't do something like that. He wouldn't leave me stranded. I'm broke. I gotta find him. Do you drive, kid? Sure, why? I just thought I might be able to help you out. See, a rich guy down in Tijuana bought a car from a friend of mine, and he ain't got time to come up here and get it. You wanna drive it down to Mexico? For how much? Oh, uh, 
50 bucks, would that be enough? 50? I'd drive to New York for that. All right, I'll give you 20 bucks now, and the rest when you come back. Good deal. Thanks a lot, mister. You're a lifesaver. Find anything on Herb Jackson? No, but I've got a new list of clients. All GTAs and all grand jury indictments. I don't get it. No, me either. Since when has a grand jury been taking time off to indict auto thefts? But look at this name here. Lonnie Ewing. Is that Bill's kid brother? Yeah, looks like stealing automobiles runs in the family. Who are you calling? Lieutenant Baxley, auto theft. Oh, auto theft, please. Lieutenant Baxley? Morning, Lieutenant. How's everything at the sheriff's office? Busy. Yeah, I see, but why the sudden rush on GTAs? They stole cars, we picked them up. I know, but why the grand jury? You had coffee? I just had two cups. Too bad. I was going across the street for some. I'll make room for a third. I'll see you in five minutes. Find out anything? Weren't you a police officer before you became chief investigator for this office? That's right. Well, then you should know that when you ask direct questions, sometimes you get indirect answers. the taste. Oh. Well, what's the scoop? Heard of Operation Cleat? Cleat? C-L-E-A-T? No. Combine law enforcement agencies together. We've banded with the Mexican police to break up one of the biggest crime syndicates ever to hit this part of the country. What's the racket? Stealing cars, for one thing, running them into Mexico. Go on. But the rough part of it is they're being paid off an H. Right here in L.A. Dope. Well, that's why the grand jury is keeping it under wraps. Has to be if we ever want to get the man behind it. Are the boys you picked up driving the cars, do they know anything? If they do, they didn't tell me. Oh, uh, incidentally, if any of your clients want to cooperate, I can be awfully soft-hearted. I'll remember that. Mr. Matthews, they got Lonnie. They got my brother. I know, but how did you find out? He's not in your tank. There aren't any secrets in this place. Are you going to help him? Are you going to get him out? My office is working on it. Now, let's have the straight story. What do you mean? How many cars did you deliver to Mexico before you were picked up? Cars? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? I just got word that you know plenty. Say, who are you working for? Me or the cops? I'm your attorney, but I've got to know the truth. I've... I've told you the truth. All right. Just remember, you're not in here on a traffic violation. You were pushing for the joint, and so is your brother. Mr. Matthews. I'm sent to the joint, they'll get me. I know too much. Promise me county and a fair shake for Lonnie and I'll talk. I can't promise a thing. But I'll talk to the judge, it's up to him. All right, I'll talk. But not in here. Good. I'll see what I can do. Anything said in here is between you and me. And me. This is Lieutenant Baxley, auto theft. A cop. That's not part of the deal. But he is. Come in, son. Hi, Bill. Lonnie. Lonnie, what did you do? Same thing you did. Why? Why, Lonnie? I needed the money. I didn't know where you were. I went looking for you, and that guy at the garage... Rosie? Told yeah. Yeah, he said he'd give me 50 bucks if I'd deliver a car for him. I didn't know it was stolen. Honest. You see, he didn't know. He's no crook. You gotta get him out, Mr. Matthews. If you tell Lieutenant Baxley what you know, he's the one who can speak to the district attorney on your behalf. Sit down, boys. 
Now, before you tell me, let me tell you. We know what's going on. We know you're working for a big setup. Running stolen cars into Mexico is only part of it. Paying off with dope, that's what we're after. Lonnie didn't know that. Did you, Lonnie? Uh-uh. He's a good kid. I'll do anything to help him. Then start talking. Who's the boss? I don't know. Who's the front man for the cars? Rosie Matson. He runs Rosie's Motor Service. He picks up the phony plates and drivers. How about the dope? Do they pay off to him? I don't know. All I know is he's the front. Now, will you take it easy on my brother? Why did you do it, Bill? How did you get mixed up in this? Kid, I'm not smart. I never was. I was looking for an easy buck. There's no such thing. I started working on cars for Rosie, and that's it. Like I said, I'm not very bright. Lieutenant. Wait a minute. Suppose I went back to work for Rosie. Suppose that while working undercover for you, I found out who's in back of the ring. That's what you want, don't you? The big guy? I could do it. You know how long you'd last, boy, if they found out. I don't care. If it'll help clear Lonnie, I'll take my chances. We'll see, Bill. We'll see. I don't know, Bart. Undercover work is tricky business. Yeah, I know. I've talked to the DA. He's willing to ask Judge Williams to release Bill on his OR, but it's taking a big chance. He's taking a bigger chance his life. If he's sincere. Suppose he turns the tables, tips off his pals, and then disappears. I'll vouch for him, if that means anything. You wouldn't look good behind bars. Well, thanks. But just remember one thing, whether Ewing's successful or not, I'll expect you to go to bat for him. What's the collateral for Ewing's freedom? His brother. Bill Ewing wouldn't let his brother down. Miss Janice, will you get me to the DA's office, please? This is Mr. McGrath, your contact. Don't lose touch with him. If anything goes wrong, report to me. Nothing will go wrong. Never sell your opponent short. I don't. They taught me all I know, and I've been a good pupil. Sure hope so. Guess that's about it. Right. Well, you're on your own. Thanks for the break, Lieutenant. Thank him. He talked me into it. I hope you're not sorry. I'm not, Bill. Good luck. OK. I'll be seeing you. Lieutenant, you said you were a soft-hearted man. Well, aren't I? Maybe. But what are you going to say if he doesn't come back? The very day he was released, Bill Ewing reported back for work at Rosie's Motor Service Garage. Hi, pal. Why, Rosie, what a welcome. Never thought you'd miss me that much. How'd you get out? How do you think? Lack of evidence. That gag about buying the car from a pal? Worked like a charm. What name did you use? <laughs> Herb Jackson. Must be hundreds of them in California. <laughs> How come they picked you up? Speeding? You know me better than that, Rosie. They had the plates on their hot sheet. I told those guys to shoot those plates over here as soon as they got. Somebody's not doing their job. There's a lawyer over here today asking about you. Oh, that limb of the law. He's just a public defender. Wants to check on whether I work here. He asked an awful lot of questions about you. You better stay out of sight for a while. Doing what? How should I know? Say, why don't I, uh, why don't I get a promotion around here, huh? Why don't you switch me to the big operation? Swipe them plates? Yeah, why not? At least I can see they don't foul you up. Yeah, it's an idea. Wait a minute. 
How come they let you out and not the others? I'm smart, Rosie. Remember? Yeah. All right. You work the east part of town. What's there? Parking lots, junkyards. It's a good section. Out of the way. You work nights. Suits me. When do I start? Tonight. Bill Ewing started that night. His first job was to keep track of all license plates taken from cars. This information was passed on to Ed McGrath, including a list of specific areas and locations. And then McGrath brought it to the office and turned it over to Lieutenant Baxley. This way, they were able to keep a close check on all hot cars traveling towards the Mexican border. Bill Ewing was making good progress until one day when the Brain Trust got together. We haven't gotten a car through all week. Why? I don't know, boss. Uh, plates are swapped and put on the cars within a couple of hours. They can't possibly get on a hot sheet that fast. Somebody must be talking to the police then. Well, don't look at me. Who have you got picking up plates? A lot of guys. Who? Who's the head boy? Bill Ewing. I thought they picked him up. They did, but they let him go. Why? Lack of evidence. That's what he said. I checked with the public defender's office. They said the same thing. Who are you calling? People you should have called in the first place. Is this the criminal clerk's office? I'd like to find out what happened to a Bill Ewing. Ewing, E-W-I-N-G. Thank you, I'll wait. You better be right. Look, boss, if I'd have... Shut up. Yes, that's him. In Department 97. Thank you. Lack of evidence, huh? Bill Ewing comes up for trial at the end of the month. Get him over here. You sent for me, Rosie? Yeah, I got news for you. Swell. I've been thinking. You're a smart guy, wide awake. I think you wasted swiping plates. You got a better idea? Yeah. I gave you a big pitch to the boss today. He wants to see you. The big boss? Sure. You don't want to play in the minors forever, do you? No, no, Rosie. I'm going to take you to see him personally. When? Tonight? Say, I'd better change to some clean clothes. You look fine, kid. Stick around. But, uh, but you what? Nothing. <laughs> Relax, kid. Where you're going, clothes don't mean a thing. That night, Bill was to call us at 8. But by 9, we still had no word. Looks like our boy took a powder. It was bound to happen. He's always called on time before. Something must have gone wrong. Wrong is right, but not how you mean. He skipped after telling his friends what's up. Why should he change? He's been doing fine. I never should have trusted him. He'll call. Yes? No, this is not Joe's bar. It's a county morgue. It ain't funny. Can't wait any longer, Bart. I'm going to call the chief and tell him to get this thing rolling. Give him a chance. He'll call. Let the whole bunch of them get away? Not on your life. We're moving in and pick up what's left of that mob, if any. Yeah, but suppose Bill got a break, got it on the inside. Yes? Yes, Maggie. No. No, I won't be home for dinner. All right, be mad. Don't call on this number again. I got to keep it open. The wife. Hold that call a few more minutes. It could mean the boy's life. Sorry, Bart. Time's run out. <laughs> Oh, 
Operation Cleat went into action, a network of law enforcement agencies spread across all of Southern California. Yeah, I'm going to meet the big man. I'll be at... Potter's Field, Omit Flowers. Say, my dame's got no sense of humor. And she hates being stood up. So does the boss. Come on. Too long, if you ask me. Nobody did. I'm told you're trustworthy and reliable. I had big plans for you. Yeah, that's, that's what Rosie said. I like to take a personal interest in my men. But I hate disappointments. They're bad for my ego. Easy. You've been a disappointment, Bill. Why did you lie about your release? I didn't lie. Then how did you get out? Pal I put up bail. That's not what you told Rosie. Well, I, I wanted to get back to work, that's all. I, I need the dough. Don't you know that once you're caught by the police, you're on your own and you have to stay clear of this operation? Look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean no harm. Why did you come back to us? I just told you. I don't believe him. I don't either. You seen a cunt! You've got a brother, haven't you? You can't touch him, he's in county. Well, why should that stop me? You know about the grapevine. You leave Lonnie out of this. Then you talk. Because if you don't, I'll just call a certain party, and he'll be dead in an hour. Don't. Don't go. Bart, somebody tipped him off. Yeah, it looks that way. I hope Ewing knows a few prayers. He could use them. But I'm not giving up. Well, they left in a hurry. They even left their merchandise behind. Bart! I missed you at the office. I know where they're holding Ewing. All right, that's it. I can leave my, my brother alone. I'll think about it. Hold it. You want to make another mistake? Bring him along. We're pulling out of here. Well, don't stand there. Let's get going. Give Nick a hand. All right, get your hands up over against the wall. He's had it. I better call an ambulance. I never thought we'd make it. I hope he does. He better. He's the best client our office has ever had. Bill Ewing made it all right. His unfailing courage helped to break up the ring and won him his probation. But more important to Bill Ewing, it helped to clear his brother Lonnie. The case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender. Tonight, Philip Morris welcomes the first public defender in the state of New York, Vincent J. DeRamo, public defender of Monroe County, Rochester, New York. May your fine example be followed by other communities throughout the country.